Now let's start flying this strip and I'll show you some of the ways that I would use it. We're sitting here at Wichita. Well, what's the first thing we need to do? Well, we need to get ATIS and ground and all that good stuff. So, like I was showing just a minute ago, we go to nav page 3, take the inner knob, one click over from the map, and now in the middle of the right hand knob is a cursor. I push it, see the highlight dropped up on top, now with the big knob I can scroll down my list. And that's something you'll hear me say probably quite a bit through this video is use the big knob to scroll down list. Some lists will let you do the middle inner knob, but most of the time if you get in the habit of the outer knob it's always going to work on every page that you're in. It's consistent with the unit. So we turned on our cursor, we scrolled down, we highlighted ATIS, and it's 2515. I press enter. Notice it dropped it over here in my standby com frequency. Now I can flip it into active. So now I'm listening to ATIS. And when I pressed enter, it also dropped it down to my next frequency. So I'm ready. I want clearance delivery. I press enter. I've got clearance delivery. I'm talking to them. Now I want to go ahead and get ground in there. I'm getting ready to taxi out. So I've got ground in there. And I'm going to go ahead and get tower preloaded. So taxiing out from an airport use this page. This is not any type of gimmick at all. Get used to it. That's one of the neat things of having your GPS and your radios combined in the same box. When you're done, I can turn the cursor off and now with the little knob scroll back my page and I'm sitting back on the map page. Again, if I'd ever gotten lost, hold that clear key down. It would have taken me back to nav page one. So we're sitting here at Wichita and getting ready. I've got ground in there. I'm talking to them. I'm getting ready to taxi out. One thing I do quite a bit is at larger airports, I'll go ahead and zoom in on the map. We don't show taxiways, but if they sit there and say, okay, you're going to taxi out to runway 14, well, right here is a runway diagram and how it's laid out. This is a big benefit. So let's say we've taxied out and we're ready to go. We're taking off. So I'm going to zoom out here, and uh, there's a 35 mile scale. If you come down here in the simulator, we've got a throttle. All I do is click the mouse on it and drag it up and it starts giving me speed. Uh, we'll start out at, uh, oh, how fast do we want to go? We'll start out at 162 knots. Mini 430 Golf, uh, right turn on approved runway 17, clear for takeoff. Clear to go, 430 Golf. So we're flying up to, uh, to Olathe, Kansas now. Something else I could do is I could click over one page, I could look at my main nav screen, and I'll show some of the things on this page right now. Right here, this is what we call our CDI page because the main thing on it is our CDI needle. At the corner, you see it say 5.0. That means full deflection of my CDI needle is 5 miles. Uh, when we get in a terminal stage of flight, usually within 30 miles of an airport, that will go down to a 1 mile full deflection. And when you're shooting an instrument approach, it goes down to a third mile full deflection. So that's our CDI, and it tells us right here we're going direct OJC. And you'll notice some of the information here in the data fields. It's 144 nautical miles. Our course is 54 degrees. And our bearing straight to the station is also 54 degrees. At this speed, estimated time and route is 53 minutes and uh, 26 seconds now, dwindling down. If I turn my knob over to the map page, um, I can see myself as I'm flying along. The neat thing that our maps do, basically anything you see on this map, you can point to it and find out more information about it. And this is a fantastic feature. So I'm zooming in here. You'll notice I've got roads and streets and highways and airspace, all kinds of things. Right here on the right-hand cursor on the map page, you push it, a little arrow dropped out. It was basically hidden inside the airplane. Now with the knobs, kind of etch-a-sketch style, you can pan around. The big knob will go right and left and the little knob up and down and point to things. This is one thing that is easier to do on the actual unit that is a simulator. Um, Let's see here. I want to see what this road is beneath me. I point to it. You can see there, it drops up. That's Interstate 35. I'll drop down, I see a road over here. And it pops up, that's 81. Now I can zoom out. It centers wherever I'm at. I can also put my cursor inside airspace. Notice the airspace, well there's the river. Notice the airspace, see it highlighted in dark green. If I press enter, it says, do I want to review airspace? Yes, so I press enter. And it tells me that's Wichita Class C. That's a 2,700 to 5,300 foot of the airspace. And it is sectorized with that. I might see uh, fly along, and I want to see what this airport is up here. I move my cursor up. 
That's showing the five mile ring. That's highlighting the VOR at that airport. There's the airport identifier. Notice also when I'm panning and moving the cursor up here in the upper left, it says 155 degrees, 5.5 miles. That's my distance to where I'm pointing to. So if I'm flying a trip, I can point to a VOR. Now I know my distance from that VOR, so if I'm calling up ATC and want to give a position report. Again, just like on the other with the airspace, I press enter, it'll tell me what it is. It tells me that's McConnell Air Force Base, Wichita, Kansas, and their elevation. If I want more information on that airport, you'll see here in the upper right hand corner, the dun is flashing, the cursor's on. If I turn the cursor off, and with a little knob, I can get the rest of the information pages on that airport, including runways and frequencies. This is something else I use quite a bit. I'll be flying a trip, and I know you're above a cloud deck, and you want to find out what the weather is on the ground, I'll just pan up to airports that are close to me and go to their frequency page, and I'll pick up their ASOS or their ATIS so I can listen to the weather. Uh, handy little, little thing. Now when I'm done, press the clear key, Clear is kind of the same thing as quit. It backs you out of menus. And I'm back to where I was panning around the map. So now, if I push in on the cursor, it puts basically the airplane back in the middle of the map, and I tucked it away back to bed inside the airplane. So you can see here, anything I see, you can touch and find out more information about it. Something else on the map, let's say we were looking at all that airspace. I really didn't care about the roads right now. We've got what's called a quick declutter with the clear key. You're on the map page, you press clear once, it takes off all the roads. Notice here on the map scale, it says 15 nautical miles and I've got one level of declutter. There's three levels. I press clear again, it takes off airspace. I press it again and it just keeps my active route in there. So when I'm shooting approaches, I'll usually declutter everything else off. I don't care, I don't want to see all the other clutter. But when you're on a cross country, it's nice to see those things. You press clear one more time and it cycles back on. So it's just one, two, three, and back on with the quick declutter. Now you can also go into the menu key and change what scale you want roads and things to appear on a more individual scale to it. And we'll get back into that a little bit later on. So we're taking our trip up to OJC and it's, uh, we're still 133 nautical miles away. Now I'm about halfway through my flight. Uh, if you look down here, my ground speed, I've got a, about 150 knots. Earlier I was doing 162. These are the headwinds I normally encounter, so I'm trying to make this as realistic as possible. So I'm about 67 miles out from OJC, but I'm looking up ahead and I see some clouds in the sky. You know, I think I want to check with flight service, see what the, what the weather's going to be. So what I can do is spin the big knob all the way to the right, and that Again, has that hard stop on my nearest list. First thing I have is my nearest airports, but we also have, besides nearest intersections, NDBs, intersections, all that fun stuff, is our center frequency and flight service. So I'm going to go ahead and give Wichita Flight Service a call, see what the weather is. Again, on that right hand knob, I turn, press it in, get the cursor highlighted. If I want the frequency, I can take that big knob, scroll down, again, that big knob scrolling, 122.3. Highlight it, press enter. Now I've got flight service in there. I'm going to go ahead and give them a call. And I should get good reception because notice here, it shows the bearing and distance from where I am to the transmitter site. So I'm just 11 miles away from where uh, their transmitter site is. And if I didn't want the nearest one when I have the flight service highlighted, I can take my little knob and scroll through and look at the nearest five frequencies for flight service. So I give them a call. Yeah, weather, there's a big cloud bank and everything. I'm not going to enjoy the scenery of Kansas now. So I'm going to end up getting in the clouds. So I want to go ahead and I go ahead and file a flight plan with them. Now I want to go ahead and get a hold of center. If I turn off my cursor, I can go back a page, and there's my center frequency for the sector I'm in. I don't have to go to charts, dig it out, or anything else. Just on my nearest list, go down again. I can highlight the frequency in 120.2. And I go ahead and tune it in. Now I'm talking to Kansas City Center. So I'm squared away. I'm done. I'm just going to hold that clear key down again so it takes me back to nav page one. And we'll start getting prepared for doing an approach.